Hello, and welcome to Helping.ca. Today, we're speaking to Mike Heimbach of Able Pest Control about what you need to know about staying safe from ticks and Lyme disease. So today, Mike, we're talking about uh, ticks and what people need to know about staying safe from ticks and Lyme disease, especially because we're starting to see more of it up in Canada. Yeah, Emma, so uh, the, the prevalence of Lyme disease is really increasing in Canada. Traditionally, it was more in the United States, but uh, we're finding in some tick populations in Canada, as many as 50% of the ticks tested have Lyme disease in them. So it's it's a much more of a risk than it was 10 years ago. Absolutely. And that's something that people really should really start to think about uh, yeah. when they go out and when they go hiking in places like that. So to start off, where can you come into contact with ticks? So ticks, um, ticks generally uh, be hiding on, you know, long strands of grass in forested areas or grassy areas. Uh, and ge their general approach is they'll wait, they'll just wait around on a long piece of grass until you walk past it and they'll brush, they'll kind of fall off on you. They don't, they don't really jump or fly. They just kind of fall onto your leg and grab hold you uh, at that point. So you could get it in a, in a pile, from a pile of leaves. You know, if you're going for a walk in the forest or a walk in the park, and it could be in an urban or rural setting, but that's where you need to keep an eye out for ticks. Absolutely. And how can you find out if you're planning a hike or going out camping? How can you find out if the place you're going is at risk for tick exposure? Well, I think you should consider that uh, if it's a forested area, that ticks are pos a, a possibility there in Canada. And even in most parts of Canada, ticks are, you know, um, I mean, there are ticks everywhere and there's some different species of ticks that the one that is kind of the most prevalent risk is uh, the black-legged tick uh, uh, because it spreads the Lyme disease. Mm, absolutely. So really at this point, it's just just assume that you're at risk of coming into contact with ticks if you're going to be out in a forested area. Absolutely. And so before you leave home, what should you do to protect yourself? You know, well, you know, and this is a habit that I've got gotten into with my uh, family and my children is when you're going out for a walk in the forest, we... Uh, we take, we wear long pants to start, um, and we will pull our socks up over our pants and wear socks and shoes, of course. And it does dramatically help, uh, to keep ticks from latching to you because they don't get direct contact with your skin. They can't fall into your shoe or, or something like that. So, yeah, you know, that's one thing, uh, you can use, uh, insect repellent with DEET as well. Uh, you know, light color, colored clothing helps, but I think, you know, just protecting yourself by pulling your Put, tucking your pants into your socks is the most important thing. Okay, so physical exposure is really key. Um, and you said in pesticides, we're looking, or not pesticides, sorry, bug repellent, we're looking for DEET, yeah? Yeah, yeah, repellents that have DEET, uh, they will help as well, so. Okay, Should can anything else work? Like if you want to go more natural remedy like citronella or sometimes some people recommend peppermint oil, will that help at all? Well, um, you know, I, I don't know if I can answer that. I mean, what I've I've learned and read about is that the DEET, um, I mean, DEET is a very in, uh, effective insect repellent. So, I mean, there may be other things, but, you know, I think the, the most important thing, Emma, with uh, with ticks is that, and, and the, again, this is something I've gotten into a habit with my family and children, is after you go for a walk in the park or in a forested area, check your, your body for ticks. Do a quick once over, look at, your, you know, Primarily your legs is, you know, generally where you're going to get them in most cases, unless you've been, you know, lying down or something, but mostly you're going to get them on your legs and you can see them, you know, they're between one and five millimeters. You're going to see them on your legs. And that's where it's important to do that physical check to see if you've got a tick. Okay, absolutely. And so what are you looking for? Is it just like a black little bug or is it something else? Yeah, it, yeah. Generally the black legged tick is a, a dark brown or black insect. Now, the difference with a tick is generally, uh, by the time you see it, not necessarily, it could be running up your leg, but it, it will have latched itself to you and, and will be feeding on you. Now, you won't you probably won't feel that happen. So, you, you know, you'll see it and you'll notice it. And an important thing, Emma, is, you know, I know when we see insects, our, our instinct is to smack them. Uh, it's very important with ticks that you do not do that. They need to be removed carefully. Uh, smacking a tick or grabbing it and pulling it off, uh, the Lyme disease is actually in their stomach and it comes through their mouth into your body. And that's where you're at risk. So 
Um, even if you have a tick on you, there are ways to remove it uh, carefully and properly that will really reduce, dramatically reduce the risk of you getting Lyme disease. So how can you remove it if you find one? So there's different products available that are uh, tick pullers. Some of them are like business cards. You can find them in any uh, drugstore. There are tweezers. And generally what they're going to do is uh, instead of, you know, removing the whole, like if you just grab its its body and pull it off, the head will often rip off and just stay in you, which is really gross. Yeah. Um, they'll, they'll, the tweezers or tick pullers will go underneath the mouth part and right against your skin and lift the whole mouth part out by the head. And that's the mm-hmm. safest way to do it. it at that point, uh, Emma, what I normally recommend to people, and I did this with my daughter, we found a tick on her, remove the tick, put it in a sandwich bag and take it to your family doctor. Uh, they can send it away and get tested to see if it in fact had Lyme disease. Now that doesn't mean that you have Lyme disease, but your doctor may choose to give you some uh, medicine uh, for preventative purposes. Absolutely, that's key, right? Because that's what we're trying to protect ourselves from. So even to know if the tick itself had Lyme disease. Um, yeah. before you start showing symptoms. Yeah, play it safe. And that is the thing with Lyme disease. Often the symptoms are very sporadic. They are diff- They're vi- they can be very severe in some people. They can be very moderate in others. Uh, kind of hard to catch and diagnose for most doctors are not as familiar with the symptoms of Lyme disease as, as they might be. Okay, absolutely. And is there anything else people should know about ticks and keeping themselves safe? So, you know, the... The important thing is the inspection. And don't forget about our furry friends that dogs um, can get Lyme disease as well. Uh, I've I've known family, uh, our family, our my brother-in-law's family dog died last year from Lyme disease. So oh, I'm so sorry. I know there are uh, preventative medicines you can feed to your dog. Do you know? T- uh, talk to your vet. Uh, also, doing inspections, especially around their ear areas, is very important when they've been out, you know, in a forested area. And you know how dogs are; they just they run off into the grass. So. Yeah. Just remember, remember to protect your, uh, your, your companion as well. Absolutely. Part of the family. Yeah. Everybody has to be looked after. Well, Mike, this has been so informative and important too. Thank you so much for agreeing to speak to us. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Emma. 